this morning, um, we're going to be looking at Proverbs 9, the whole chapter, but it's a brief chapter, and uh, the contrast that that is drawn out uh, in that chapter. So you can go ahead and take your Bibles and turn there, but it's an old hymn that, um, that just has been on my heart and mind, and it, it's the other amazing grace, if you will. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount I'll pour, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace it is greater than all our sin then as i saw you watching and i got nervous sin and despair like the sea waves go threaten the soul Infinite loss, grace that is greater than death untold, points to the refuge of my deep Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sin. God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look there on flowing a crimson tide, whiter than snow. God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin amen aren't you thankful for god's grace this morning now take your bibles and turn to proverbs chapter 9 and this is kind of kind of the culmination really of solomon's introduction to that lady uh, that lady wisdom and he is going to make a huge contrast he's going to introduce to us another lady in proverbs chapter 9 and we may mistake it for the other lady that he's talked about in previous chapters that adulterous woman uh, in some ways she is but it's the lady folly uh, which is in contrast to the lady wisdom and he begins by Stating this in verse 1, he says, Wisdom has built her house, and she has hewn her seven pillows. There, that, that word oftentimes we see in Scripture, the multiplicity of seven uh, is a completeness. She's completed her house. She has slaughtered her beast, and she has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. In other words, there's a call that's that's going out for wisdom, God's wisdom, as we take the word of God and we apply it in our lives. And whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine that I have mixed. Whoever is simple. Um, that, that, that description there is, is really kind of the simple-minded. And and in contrast, sometimes uh, the one who's not simple-minded, the one who uh, 
uh, has 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 a mind that they've got it all together, or they have all their own uh, wisdom that they need within themselves. Uh, they shun the wisdom of God oftentimes, or the counsel of others. And so here he calls out, wisdom calls out to those who are simple, come and eat, come and drink, leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. I love this because even a simple man or a simple-minded man or simple-minded woman uh, can, can seem extremely smart when they are a wise person. How much better is wisdom, really, than, uh, than all the education that our institutions may offer? They can lead us to wisdom if, if we apply it. Uh, but even the simple person can, can be wise and walk in insight. Verse 7, here, here's kind of a warning or an observation that, that Solomon has made. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse. And he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. Now, here's a scoffer, somebody who makes fun of or criticizes or ridicules another. And Solomon says here that if you reprove a scoffer, um, it's going to come back on you, indicating that, that a scoffer, one who is a mocker, one who has all the wisdom in themselves, they won't receive reproof. They won't receive correction. I found in my experience in life that when I, I meet a scoffer, when someone is quick to express their opinion, quick to take a stand in an area that's a foolish area. I have learned that, you know, I just, I just don't respond. Because the moment you respond to a scoffer, you're going to get reprisal back at you. Number one, they're not going to listen to you. Can you underline that? Someone who's a mocker or a scoffer or thinks they have it all in themselves they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to any reasoning that you have. Most often, their response is to come back in a very aggressive way towards you. And so, really, wisdom says, you know what? A fool's not going to listen, so I'm not going to waste my breath trying to talk to a fool. Have you ever met people like that? Uh, it's best and probably just will cause you a lot less heartache if you don't try to engage in them. And can I say that that's not only face-to-face, um, when we're tempted to quickly reply to something that, uh, that, that, that's on Facebook or social media that, that, that we take issue with, scroll on. Don't even waste your time. Don't engage. I've, I've looked back sometimes at, at people's engagement in social media, and I see they'll respond to somebody. And it's amazing the thread of responses that will come down in that news feed an argument, and it's not debate. A good debate is where both parties are listening to reason. It's not a debate. It becomes an argument. And, and it only causes, as we said yesterday, anxiety and stress in our lives. Pass over it. Let it go. Disconnect if you need to. But on the other hand, he says here that if you rebuke a wise man, if you rebuke a wise woman, if you bring correction, and can I put in parentheses, in love, if we bring a correction to a wise man or try to give instruction to a wise man, that wise man is going to take that instruction and he's going to learn from it and he's going to be wiser. Let's pray that, that we grow in wisdom and so that when we are reproofed, when we are corrected by a wise person, we take that and we submit it to the Lord. We, we converse with the Holy Spirit in that and we grow by that wisdom that has been given to us and granted to us. That's a wise person. An arrogant person, a person who's prideful, they're not going to receive correction. They're not going to receive instruction. And, you know, they'll, they'll meet their own demise as a result of that. Then he goes on to say, and we've talked a lot about this verse, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom, 
and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight, a fear of the Lord, having an honor and a reverence for God, having, having a recognition that his word is truth, and we, we're willing to receive that. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's when we're in that place that we reverence God, we reverence his word, and we're willing to receive it and grow in it. That's the beginning of knowledge. He goes on to say in verse 11, for by me, your days, me mean, meaning wisdom, by me, your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. Then he concludes, beginning in verse 13, this contrast with, with another woman, uh, folly. He says this, the woman folly is loud. She is loud, boisterous. She's crying out. And she is seductive, but she knows nothing. Her seductiveness is that she, she, she shouts a message that appeals to what's already in us, our flesh, or if you're not saved, that old nature that will will want to draw us off the path or one off the path of what is doing right. And it's easy if we're, if we're not careful, if we're not attuned all the time to hear the Holy Spirit, to hear the wisdom and knowledge of God, that when folly cries out, she's crying out, try to, uh, trying to appeal to something that's, that's in our flesh that wants us to be drawn off the path of righteousness. She sits at the door of her house. She takes a seat on the highest place of the town, way up there so she can be seen and she can be heard, calling out to those who pass by, who are going straight on their way. They're minding their own business. They're going their own way. And she's right there in a prominent place. And she is crying out at the door of her dwelling to try to draw us in. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Here the idea is mischief or wrongdoing. It's pleasant. And can I say, sin is pleasurable for the moment. Can you say amen to that? Listen, before I was saved, um, I didn't have one of the stories that I was downtrodden. I, I was... I was into everything there was, and I loved it. I was having a great time. It just hadn't caught up with me yet. Sin is pleasurable for the moment, but later, oh my goodness, the destruction and the demise that it brings in our life. But he, uh, but he does not know the person who's being drawn in. He does not know that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of Sheol. There are two voices that cry out to us every single day. The voice, we might say, of the Holy Spirit, uh, the voice of wisdom, the voice of the knowledge of God and His Word implanted in our hearts. That voice cries out to us. But there's also the voice of folly that cries out to us. And it's in those moments of temptation where the voice of folly that cries out to us boy, we have to really bear up and, and not be taken by the moment for pleasurable sin because in its end, it brings destruction. May God grant us wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit to understand and apply his word in our life that we might walk and grow in the wisdom and knowledge of God. Well, this morning as we close, I want to remind you again today that, that we want to pray and ask God that wherever he has us today, whoever we come across, whatever paths we cross by of individuals, be attuned to the Holy Spirit, that we might plant a seed of the gospel in their heart, uh, that God might use us to cultivate the soil, their heart by the word of God, expressing his love and his grace and his mercies uh, to them. And then if God by his grace would let us participate in seeing him save somebody, oh my goodness, I pray that God uh, will let me engage in that today. You pray the same prayer. God, give me an opportunity today to plant a seed in somebody's heart. God, give me an opportunity, Lord, to cultivate a seed that's already been planted. 
God, by your grace, Lord, I'd love to watch you save somebody today. So, Lord, give me those opportunities. God, make me attuned to those times and those events. Let it be intentional in my life. I love you, Lord. I, I pray your blessings today, God, that I'd walk in the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yesterday, if you were here, we are making it easy for you to take those cards that we gave to you. And every time somebody hands you something today, hand one of those cards back to them that they might engage um, virtually or attend service. Or God may use that to open up an opportunity for you to share Christ with somebody. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Have a great day.